Welcome from Ohio. <laughs> Hello. <There's> <laughs> Hi. How are you? <laughs> hey, you know, you remember this picture here, don't you? Yes, I do. It's been a, I was just saying it's been a very long time ago and I look much younger in that picture. <laughs> Well, we all do 10 years ago. That was 10 know, years ago. Right? Now. Like the whole Facebook thing that's going around, how, you, how you've aged. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I keep away from that Facebook. I don't want people to see anything about me in the past <laughs> or in the future. Or that there, is. You go. there you go. <laughs> yeah, you came there and wasn't Bob with you? Didn't your husband came? Yeah. Yep, yeah, my husband came with me. Um, our son actually came with us, and my mother-in-law. She was watching my son at the time, but um, yeah, the the four of us actually came down there. So Bob, my husband, and I we actually went to the training. Um, I, can, ten, I can't ten, even wrap my brain around that. Now, folks, if you're having a hard time understanding why we're interviewing somebody who's been with us ten years, you're going to find out. I want you to see where you can take this business. But at the same time, we've done over uh, seventy interviews now with people from all across the nation. And you're welcome to go to our YouTube uh, and see that. It's youtube.com slash why ABS, W-H-Y ABS. And you'll be able to see, just type in the word uh, search for interview and you'll see some of those interviews out there. In fact, you'll see one with Wendy probably 10 years ago because Wendy, <laughs> if you remember, yeah, after you signed up your first client, mm -hmm. we got on there and did one. Yep, that's, it's been a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, so just to kind of start from scratch, I'm going to ask the folks to, uh, I'm going to clean out all the uh, little comments here that are in the question box, but we are going to use the question box today, folks. If you want to ask a question specifically to Wendy today, just type it in the box there and I'll, I'll answer those or read them out loud as they come in. So Wendy, let's go back 10 years ago. Where were you at? What were you doing? What, what is your background uh, before you got into this business? Sure. Um, I, I went to school for exercise physiology. I have a business minor. Um, I was working in the fitness world for, I don't know, probably about five years after college and decided I needed something different to do. So I went to flowers. I was wh wholesaling flowers to flower shops for about another five years. And then um, when my son came home from Russia, he's, he's adopted from Russia. So um, he was pretty sick. I was in and out of work a lot and I needed something more that was a lot more flexible with my schedule and something that I could do from home and, and be here when he you know needed me to be home. Um, so we looked at ABS and um, went through the training and in Texas and, and all that fun stuff. So um, my background is nothing to do with medical billing. Um, it's basically just fitness and flowers. I'm <laughs> If I can do it, you can and, do it. <laughs> and why why this industry? Why did you pick that you wanted to get into medical billing? We were looking for something that I could do that I could run from my home um, and, and be very flexible with my schedule. And um, I remember, um, yep, there's my husband, um, going to, uh, you know, looking at different things that I could do. And I thought, you know, I, I know that I can do this. It's all on the computer. It's um, I mean, I, what I tell a lot of my providers and, you know, staff and stuff like that is that I, I need a computer and I need internet and I could do your billing. Like I, that's, I can do everything that I need right there. So yeah. it, it's well, kind of nice. It goes well, with you wherever. <laughs> so, so what about your, um, didn't you have a fear of, you know, all the coding and, you know, the technical side of this thing, or did you just say, I mean, you know what, I'm just gonna jump in there and learn. I think I remember a little bit being nervous. Um, I'm more so talking to the providers and and knowing um, the correct buzzwords and stuff like that. But what I've kind of found out is that a lot of the providers are, I mean, they know the basics um, with billing and stuff like that. Like they're not. Um, for most of the part, like I, I read through the manuals and stuff like that, trying to, you know, get my information and make sure that I knew, you know, certain words, but a lot of the stuff that we went over in training and, you know, the stuff that came home in the pamphlets and stuff like that, like that covered most everything. Um, and I, I, after you get your first client and you're in there and talking to them and stuff like that, you're realizing that a, a lot of them really don't understand <laughs> anything about the billing cycle anyway. Um, they want to be a doctor and that's it. That's that's the beauty of it. So that's where we're I, I kind of joke about that sometimes there at the training. I say, folks, now hard <laughs> to believe in five days you're going to learn what you need to know to get this yeah. business started. But uh, you'll probably know more than 
95% of all the office managers out there, yeah. you know? There's, so. there is, a, yeah, a lot of them have really no clue um, or not, uh, not a really good understanding of the revenue cycle. And um, I mean, it's, it's pretty cut and dry. I mean, it's the same no matter what insurance company you're dealing with, no matter what type of provider you're dealing with, the codes are the codes and insurance companies all act the same way. And, you know, insurance companies don't want to pay people, providers want to get paid. So that's where we come into play. It's, it's pretty much all the same across the board. Yeah, now you're up in Ohio, right? Uh, yep. I mean, you, you started in, in Ohio and then, yep. I mean, we're jumping ahead here. I, I want to kind of get to this in, in more detail, but you you decided to merge with another company and yep. and just now you've got, uh, uh, what, like 50, 50 clients or yeah, so? Yeah, about 50 accounts that we're, that we're billing for. Um, I, I'm not sure the number of providers. Um, some of them have, a lot of them have multiple providers at them. Um, but we've got about 50 accounts that we're running with. Um, and that's as far as like, um, specialty type, I and mean, we've got literally everything across the board, um, home health care, all the way through surgeons, physicians, chiropractors, um, just a little bit of everything. And I think that's one of the things that has set us apart from a lot of the other companies is that we're so diverse in the type of billing that we do. Um, some people will stick to a certain specialty, which is fine. Um, I've just, I don't want to put all my eggs in one basket, so I'm just make it spread it around. So, and that's worked for us. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's a good way to look at it is that, uh, some licensees kind of start out with uh, the first doctor they run across, maybe at a networking meeting yeah. or some of the other methods we teach to, to market to doctors and they'll maybe sign up a cardiologist. Well, that cardiologist knows other cardiologists. So all of a sudden you're doing billing for cardiology, you become the specialist, but yeah. it's really better to have a broad base like you have, I guess. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's definitely like when you're, when you're going in and you know, you're talking to a provider, if you already have that special specialty, it's, you know, you know, a lot more of their specific codes and stuff like that, that they're going to be using. Maybe some of the issues that, you know, your current providers have come across, but I, you know, and I tell a lot of the providers, especially if it's a new, if it's a new provider, especially that we do not have, I usually just tell them, you know, look, codes are codes, insurance is going to process them the same way. So um, I don't, I don't have a huge fear in, in taking on a new specialty or anything like that. Um, and we haven't really had a lot of kickback from it, um, especially if it's a new, new type of provider. That's interesting. There's a question here from Claude says, did your first client ask if you had experience with billing or coding and what did you <laughs> yeah. tell them? <laughs> yeah, they, um, that was, that definitely came across as a first, one of my first questions. Um, and um, ABS is great because, you know, you guys train us and teach us how to exactly answer that type of a question. Um, you know, and it's, it, you're, you've got a network like, yeah, you're new in the area, but you've got the backing of all these medical providers or billing specialists all across the United States. Um, and not to mention ABS alone, um, the support that you're going to get from ABS is, is awesome. And I, I can, I can say that just from experience. Um, you know, if I ever had any questions, um, especially getting started, not so much anymore, but getting started. Um, people were very quick to respond. Um, if my phone call didn't get answered and I had to leave a voicemail, that voicemail was returned within a couple hours. Um, so it wasn't like I was left hanging anywhere. Emails are responded to very quickly. Um, and that's, that is huge. I mean, I, I could tell you that's even better than some of the, the billing systems and, you know, stuff like that, that you may and encounter. Um, the level of support is huge. And especially with something like this, that, you know, you're reliant upon them to help you out and get you the information that you need quickly because providers don't want to wait around. Yeah. Wendy, I don't think we even had our licensee support website back 10 years ago. Did we, or, um, I think it was just starting. It was, um, there was a, a website that you could go to, but I mean, it had some information on it. Um, but I think probably within the first couple of years of, of me being in business there, I think that was when they started a lot of, a lot more of that type of stuff. Internet became <laughs> more popular, I guess. I don't know. I like feel so old. <laughs> it's hard to believe isn't it? even 10 yeah. years ago. Uh, yeah. yeah. The internet had not, I don't think there was such a thing as cloud-based software back yeah. then. It was all, you know, you started yeah. out on our, our uh, server-based software that came on a CD, you know, so. Yeah. 
Yeah, and um, I can tell you that um, a lot of the providers now more so it's more mainstream for a lot of the providers to be on, you know, web type systems and, and billing electronically is what I should say. Um, yeah. But then I came across providers constantly that were still building on paper claims, um, putting stuff in the mail and hoping that it makes it there. I mean, now everything is even the insurance companies are all electronic and you can load stuff to their portals. And I, I mean, it has made my work a, a fraction of what it used to be. Um, I mean, I yeah. can buzz through a whole other account pretty quickly now. Yeah, I was just showing a. Uh, on the screen here, the licensee support site. This is live, actually. I actually logged into it so you guys could kind of see that there's there's just a ton of stuff out there about marketing and all the different services you can offer, resources of all kinds. Wendy, I bet you hadn't checked in on this thing for a long time. Have no, you? I haven't. I'm gonna have to log in now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, here's our latest post. That was today. And uh, if you scroll down, you see there's posts there already, three or four this year, and uh, I mean, this goes way back. Look, this is to October yeah. 2014. So yeah, it's uh, been out there a while for sure. Awesome. Okay, so uh, here's a question from uh, Daniel. He says, with so many licensees in the medical billing industry, do you find certain markets are saturated with ABS or other medical billing services? What do you no. find out there? Not, not so much. Um, I mean, you're, you're always going to come across another, you know, bill or here and there. I, I think I've, I've come across other ABS licensees here in Ohio, um, a handful of them here and there, but not, I mean, not overrun. Um, I think the business is, you know, it's what you make of it. I mean, you're going to come across lots of different things out there, but you just, you need to find the way that sets yourself apart from everybody else out there. Um, and yeah. just being on top of your stuff is, is the key. It's, it's absolute key to making sure your business is going to go well and keep your providers you know, happy. That's, <laughs> that's true with every business that's out there though. There's, there's competition in every business. If it's yeah. a valid business, if it's a real business, you know? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Hey, you, uh, let's see, I need to switch here to this window here. I think, let me see if this works. There we go. Huh? Remember that picture? Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you sent that to me, I guess, when we did that first webinar. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Wow. That's an old yeah. one too. Uh, <laughs> my husband I'll have those the name. I do not. <laughs> I'll, I'll have those available for you for you know, $14.95 for an eight by 10. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That's All right, great. let's see. Here's uh, let me get back to, here to this. With um, this is from uh, Brian. He says, "Do you think it's easy to get the doctor or client over the phone that is not local to you?" Well, first of all, answer that question. Do you have clients that are outside your Ohio, Wisconsin area? Yeah, I do. Um, we've actually got a number of them. Um, we have clients, actually, we've got clients in Texas. We've got clients in North Carolina. We've got clients in New Jersey. We've got clients literally all over the place. Um, I've had clients out in California. Um, can't get much farther than that. Um, and I, we do a lot of my, my uh, marketing is done uh, through internet marketing. Internet marketing is a an amazing tool. It's a very powerful tool to, you know, get your, get your clientele, get them the providers because I, and, and from my experience, providers are on there looking at stuff evenings and weekends when things are quiet and there's not, you know, the office staff is not around. Maybe their accountant has said, Hey, your numbers are looking kind of off. Um, this last year, your numbers are way down or this last six months. And, and that's when they start doing a lot of, the poking around, um, we get probably most of our info requests during the evening and weekend hours, for sure. So. Yeah. So I think what Brian is referring to here, um, Brian, I think has a background in sales. And so he's thinking that you're trying to get the doctor or the client over the phone, maybe outside your area. And, uh, you know, we don't teach that you just pick up the phone and try to reach a doctor like that, do yeah. we? Yeah, no, and and I don't, yeah, we did not do any of that. The the marketing and um, information that we got was, you know, it's it's coming at it from a different angle and, you know, providing them with a source of maybe not necessarily medical billing at the front, 
Um, I, you know, I went that, that route for a while and decided, you know, this is, I want to focus on medical billing and really started pushing and marketing for, you know, specifically medical billing. But there's a lot of different angles that you can come at this at. Um, and that's another great thing about ABS is that they, you, know, you guys offer so many different avenues of revenue. It's not just medical billing or, you know, anything like that. There's, there's tons of different things that you can do. Um, so if you're not, if you don't really like one aspect of it, you can switch and do something different. There, it's not like somebody's over there telling you, you have to do it this way. Right. In fact, I just put up uh, all the <laughs> yeah. flyers that are available for all those other services that she's talking to you about. Now, let's be honest, the, the real cash flow there is in the billing, doing that billing for doctors, getting a percentage, six to seven, eight percent, whatever, yeah. on all the money that's brought in for that doctor. That's that's where the real money is, of course. There's money in this too, but I mean, these things we, we designed primarily just so you'd have other things to offer to the doctor or to get in the door. Sometimes they'll talk to you about, uh, you know, some of these services when they might not want to talk to you about the billing. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I, we've used actually a number of these. Um, actually, I've used a number of these. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Wendy, here's one from uh, Ahmad says, what type of marketing did you use to get your first client and how long did it take you to get the first few clients? <laughs> um, so I, I was doing a lot of like pounding the pavement. I would go out and I'd visit providers and starting off again, because my son was home with me. So I had one day a week that he was in daycare. Um, we backed off daycare. He was uh, he was in daycare for you know five days a week when I was at my old job. We backed it all the way off to one day a week. So I had to do everything in that one day. I mean, I was very fortunate enough that I could leave my last job and Bob, you know, was able to support us so that I could start this business. Um, not everybody's that fortunate, but um, so I would go out that one day and pound the pavement and do all kinds of marketing. I would go visit you know pr providers and. Um, stuff like that. And uh, we were also doing internet marketing. And of course, <laughs> the internet marketing is what got me my first client. I could have, I could have just stayed at home. Um, but yeah. It's, yeah. So it's, I, I had, and I, and I always tell everybody, I'm like, you have to go out and market because I mean, that's how you get your name out there and stuff like that. But um, the internet marketing is where we got our first client. It took me about three months to get that first client. Um, and it was a psychology practice. There was like, it was like 20 providers that were in that group. So um, oh, it, was, well, it, was a fun, it was a fun account to start off with. <laughs> uh, yeah. I didn't realize you started with uh, 20, 20 providers. Yeah, or yeah but they're psychologists. So, I mean, you figure they're, they probably totaled probably about three full-time providers. Um, so it's not yeah. all of them are full-time and they're, they're seeing provide or patients every 45 minutes. So it was not, yeah. not as bad as it sounded <laughs> originally. <laughs> or as good as. Uh, let's see. Daniel says with 50 plus providers, uh, how, how many people work in the business? How many people do you have actually doing the billing, for example? Um, actually doing the billing, we've got, a, there's 154 of us right now. Um, and that's between the two companies. Um, my company had about half of that when we first started. And I was able to run that with, I think there was seven, seven of us in the office um, between doing billing, follow up and all that stuff. Um, because we've basically doubled in size, it's, um, they had, they brought all their people with them already. So they had, they had about 130, um, when we first started working with them. Um, and it, we've compartmentalized a lot of things. The business is a little bit different. You have to run it a little bit differently with that mass amount of people, um, and clientele. So it's things change. And that's the beauty of this business is that it kind of grows into whatever you want it to grow into. Um, yeah. I mean, I started off, well. exactly. I started off with the thought of, I am going to have, I want to get three providers and I'm just going to do this part-time and that's it. I mean, I will be happy with that. Uh, it'll be great. And I got my first provider and then I got my second group and then a third group. And then I was like, well, this is kind of fun. I think I'm just going to continue on and let's just see how big we can make this. And, um, let's see what we can do with this. So I guess the rest is history. <laughs> And, and Bob, all along, Bob was helping you, of course, with uh, internet stuff yep. and so forth. Yep. He's, He's my full time guy. job. <laughs> yeah, does, he right? has a full-time job. He, he has a full-time job that is very demanding of his time. And um, then I come in saying, can you help me with this? Can you do that? And um, he's got us set up on servers and stuff like that. So 
um, he's done, he's done a lot of IT work for me on the backside of it for sure, but um, it's, uh, it's been fun. <laughs> Most licensees that I interview, of course, when they get to the point where they've, uh, you know, replaced their, their full-time income with just a handful of clients, they, they will, uh, the spouse usually will join in the business, yeah. <laughs> but I think Bob's got a pretty cushy a, a business yeah, that he's he, in. Right? So, I told him, I'm like, oh, I don't know. I, I think your, your job there, I, he, he's happy with doing, he likes IT stuff and he's in the IT world. And I can't imagine him. I can't imagine him leaving that to come, come work, <laughs> come work for me. I don't think he could do that. Yeah. No, no, it'd be hard for, yeah. Most husbands to work for their wives. <laughs> hey, um, this this question I think you've already answered, but uh, Sahida said, uh, "Are all her fifty accounts in Ohio?" You answered that no, they're all over the place, right? And mm -hmm. how is that possible? People wonder about that. How did you get accounts that are in all those other states? Um, the internet marketing for sure, um, but also yeah. word of mouth. Um, providers have friends in other states, and you know, doctors doctors talk and doctors. Um, you know, they, they've, they've got family. I mean, some of these providers, I have one provider that has like, he's 30 doctors in his family. Um, so it's, wow. and they're spread out all over the United States. So, um, and networking groups and stuff like that, um, that are not necessarily here in, in Ohio, they may be in other States. Um, they know people in other States. So it's, it's a little bit of everything. So basically, if you if you get a client uh, and you do a good job for that client, if that doctor knows another doctor in another state, they yeah. simply uh, let that doctor know that you're doing the billing, they're happy with mm -hmm. you, and then do you basically, can you sign those doctors up and do that yeah, all over it, the internet? Yeah, it's it's pretty, yeah, and I've got some providers that I've literally never met face-to-face, -face. like I, and not the ones that came from the other the other company, but like my own providers, like I've literally done all the transactions over the phone, and email and i've never once met them face to face um it's i mean i i'm and they're 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 happy with that um i don't i'm i work well with i try to work with however they're comfortable um i have some that want to come to the office i have some that um you know they they want a face to face type of situation that that's fine too i have i you got you got to be able to mesh and move with whatever they're looking for cuz they're all different um every sure. provider is different every office is different it's um that's probably one of the biggest things is if you go into it thinking that every office is going to be the same <laughs> you're in for a rude awakening they're they're all different all different yeah. monsters <laughs> oh, yeah. now eileen says uh if you if it took you three months to get your first client why did it take that long she thinks that's a long time 90 days <laughs> um and i think that's actually it's pretty pretty common um they you know, so you're getting your, your marketing set up, you're, you know, you're basically a brand new company. Um, part of that time we had, so it was January, it was March when I got my first account. January, I went to training. So that there's a, you know, a, a week there, um, getting home, getting everything set up, getting the business set up, getting your name set up, all tax ID, all that fun stuff. Um, and then actually going out marketing. Um, I, sometimes it takes longer. Sometimes it takes less time. There, there are some, some, uh, specialists or I'm sorry, some billers that walk in having a client. There's some that wait six months. Um, it just depends on, I don't know, just how, how things fall and it being in the right place at the right time. Um, how much marketing you're willing to do and stuff like that. I always tell everybody, I'm like, don't put a sign out in your front yard and expect the business is just going to come flooding in. Like you have to go out and do stuff. <laughs> yeah. Just like any business out there. And that, that's why we teach about a you know, a dozen different ways to go out and market because some things fit your personality and your budget and your right. schedule better than others. Uh, but they all work or we wouldn't yeah. be teaching them, of course. In fact, uh, the, our current instructor, uh, I don't think you've ever met Cynthia. Have you? Cynthia yeah. Anderson. Yeah, uh, she's a licensee that's been with us for about 10 years as well. <laughs> and she came okay. through training and then decided that at one point we, we lost our previous instructor uh -huh. and she wanted to teach, so she's been coming down doing that for now about three years. She does a terrific job, and she says the same thing, that I, the things I teach really work, guys, because I've tried all of them. They all have gotten me clients, or we yep. wouldn't be teaching them. Right, uh, that's so, right. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Claude says, were most of your early clients local doctors whom you could meet face-to-face? -face? Yeah, I think most of them were. Um... I think all of them were, actually. Most all of my, a lot of my clientele base is here in Ohio. 
Um, I, I've worked on that mainly because my marketing has been focused here in Ohio. Um, and the, with the internet marketing and stuff like that, and you'll find once you get on there, Google AdWords and stuff like that, like you can make it the whole United States, but you're going to go through your money really quickly. Um, and if you compress it down into small areas, then you can kind of pinpoint and target those areas. Um, so yeah, most of my clients at the very beginning, yeah, all wanted to you know meet face to face, and that might have just been to me saying, hey, I'll you know I'll come to your office, and you know really trying sure. to go above and beyond. And now it's it's you know, like if they want that, that's great. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna push it on them. No, you you, you want to meet them, and uh, yeah. that that builds uh, credibility and trust yep. between you and them. Absolutely, and, uh, yeah. you're handling all their financial everything, so it's right. Uh, that's right. Uh, we got a couple of questions here. Brian and Daniel both are asking about the internet marketing. Well, and so is Sahida. Uh, how did you learn internet marketing? Uh, you said already that Bob did most of it for you, but yeah, did he did basically did, uh, build you a, a website that had some good? Uh, we actually use the ABS website. Um, so we got a, you get a website. I, I'm assuming they still get a website um, when you sign yeah. up, um, and we use that website for many years. Um, and Google AdWords, Google, Google will hold your hand and work with you through the whole process. Um, they will, I mean, they, that's how they make money. They make a lot of, not, not all the money, but they make a lot of money off of AdWords and stuff like that. So, I mean, they, if you go on and I mean, you, you probably get it in the mail, you'll get like free samples, like where you can, you know, get so much free here, free there um, during the Google AdWords. Um, but they get you in there and then they'll, they'll even show you how to set everything up and, um, you know, the buzzwords that you should use. And sometimes you have to tweak it a little bit based on your area, but um, there's, there's a lot of things that go into it. And they've gotten a lot more specific now. It's how often do you update your website? How often do you update your blog? Do you have a blog? Do you, you know, so there's a lot more things that they keep adding into it to change it and make it um, so that you're, you want your stuff to pop up on top and you got to push it. I'm sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, and, and let's face it, you, you can spend a lot of money uh, on advertising out there on the internet, just like you could yeah. if you put ads in magazines or billboards or all that stuff. Yeah. So Absolutely. it all depends on you and your individual way of doing okay. it. But but basically, you have to get people to come to you. It's, it's like you said earlier, you can put up a sign in the middle of a field in Kansas, but people are not going to just rush to do business yeah. with you. They got to know that you're there. And so yeah. you've got to get people to find you on mm -hmm. the internet. And we teach some of that, of course, through our uh, online courses that we have for our licensees. Once you become a licensee, we have other training that you can get from us uh, mm -hmm. at no cost. But I mean, it's included, but it's it's all online. And so we we go into detail and that stuff. You know, you can only teach so much in one week's time. So <laughs> I know it's it's a quick. It goes by really fast. There's there's a lot of information yeah. that goes into that class, and um, I'm sure it's changed a billion times since since I was there. But yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You wouldn't recognize it now. We actually bring in laptops for them on day that's one, awesome. and people are actually doing billing. Yeah, right yeah. there. I, I think that's great because that that was, um, you know, once I got my first client, it was it was a little nerve wracking. Like, Oop, I think I'm doing this right. I've I've watched the videos, and I'm pretty sure that I'm submitting this correctly. And out the door it went. And I'm like, well, let's keep our fingers crossed. But um, <laughs> yeah, so it that part of it, um, I think it's great that you have them have them getting in there doing that. You know, I, I probably just, I may have dozed off while ago because there's a question here from Sahita says something about where, where did you, ha where did you put the seven people that were working with you? Did you mention seven people while ago? I just missed that number, I guess. Yeah. So um, I had uh, just with my, my side of the company, I had seven people that were in my office. Um, oh, yeah. I, yeah, I worked out of my home for probably the first three, three years of the business. Um, I did everything by myself um, at two, or two, three years, something I can't remember. Um, and then once I brought on my first employee, she worked out of her house for probably about a month. And then I was like, we need to, we, I need an office because <laughs> it's hard to, <laughs> it's hard to <laughs> control what's going on in that person's, you know, house and, and making sure they're working and stuff like that. So, you know, employees add a whole nother level of um, fun to the business, but um, definitely having a physical office um, solved a lot of that problem. Um, but now, I mean, everybody, we have an office that everybody works out of. Um, I, I go between that and my home office. So it's kind of nice to have a flexibility. Yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm at my home right now, but mm -hmm. I, our office is only about 15 minutes away and I go up there when I need to, but uh, yeah. otherwise I, 
I kind of like it working here at home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You get a lot more accomplished, I think. I, at least I do. I get a lot more accomplished at home. I can focus a lot more. <laughs> yeah, and of course, because we have a cloud-based system, folks, you can hire people to do the billing and manage them over the internet, just like we're having this meeting right here. Yeah. These there's there's uh, platforms like Zoom yep. uh, and others out there that for free you can connect and share yep. the screen and teach people and watch what they're doing and and yep. so you can do it, uh, you know, remotely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So people can hire people working from their home. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. We got some questions here about your company and who you merged with and all that. And we, we really don't get into that folks uh, in detail because we don't want a lot of people just Googling and going out and <laughs> well, to be honest, calling, you know, <laughs> and uh, bugging her. Although I think you take some reference calls, don't you? Randy? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yep, I think all I right. did one yeah. uh, the other day actually. Okay, so what we'll do, folks, uh, for those kinds of questions, you know, like if you want to ask her, how much money do you have in your bank account, that kind of thing, <laughs> do that directly. <laughs> uh, and so get back to the person who invited you to this webinar. That person is called your your business coach, and we will uh, they will share with you uh, her phone number and how to get a hold of her. All right, let's see. Oh, lots of questions coming in here. Let's see. Uh, let's see. This is this is to ABS. Uh, how much extra than the twenty seven thousand dollar license fee would it cost it to attend the training? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize it was kind of about the training. But Wendy, our training now is about twenty six thousand nine ninety. It's an extra thousand dollars for a second person if the seat is available. And uh, so you have to again get back with your get back with the guy that uh, your business coach, folks, because this is our twenty fifth anniversary. And we are doing some very special things to get you in the classes uh, the first of the year here. So be sure you get back with them about that. Uh, here's Jim saying, what opens the door to new business? Are they looking at service issues or pricing? In other words, why, why would a doctor even want to engage with you? Yeah. Um, so it could be that they're, you know, maybe their biller up and left them. They quit. Um, it could be that their funding, their funds are low. Their, like I said, their accountant may be calling them saying, hey, your, your numbers are really low. Um, they could be seeing things in the office. Um, th there's a number, there's a number of different things. Um, it could be a new office that we happen to get. Um, I would say most of the clients that we get are people that have come from um, a, a, a bad billing experience, whether that's internal or, uh, you know, an outsourced company. Um, and it's, we have to go in and we do a lot of cleanup work, um, trying to get, you know, old claims paid and processed as well as the new stuff going out. Um, so it's, it's a combination of both, but, um, I, most of the time it's for billing, for billing reasons. We do have some that we do credentialing for and stuff like that, but, um, it's, it's mostly for billing, like billing needs that their billing is in shambles or they, they haven't ever started it. <laughs> They're a new company. So. Yeah. Now, I, I don't want to mention company names here, but in general, I don't want to ignore Jim's question because it is an interesting one as to why you merged. Can you give us a feel for, you know, what was the behind the scenes, uh, you know, wanting to merge with this other company? They just had yeah. clients you wanted to grow? Um, so our my my company had, you know, grown to such a level and I was basically doing all of that, you know, work by myself. I obviously I had my employees, but I was managing the employees and um, you know, basically just, you know, doing that and continuing to do that. Um, my son, um, my youngest son, um, we had adopted him from China when he was four. He came home with a heart condition, which we did know about. Um, he was in the hospital for two months. I, I, my company basically ran itself for two months. So, I mean, that is a testation to, I mean, this, this, you can pick it up and, you know, leave it if you, if you need to. Um, as long as you've got your employees in place. Um, I had some great employees that were able to take that on and um, kind of help me out during that time frame. Um, but I was really looking for some extra help. And I had been approached by numerous business people asking, you know, hey, are you interested in selling? Are you interested in merging? And um, this company that came in, um, they were a startup like myself. Um, and they had grown the business and they wanted to you know, jumpstart or continue the growth and massively by buying other companies and merging them together. Um, and so we basically looked at it. They had the same pretty much structure that, that we did the same, you know, they, they were 
guys that were involved in the business. They weren't, you know, just buyers and sellers. Like I'm just going to buy this and, you know, tear the company apart and, and go on our merry way. Um, yeah. And they were looking for a, a good presence to, that could kind of run the company and I'm still involved in it. And that's, that's, that was the key for me. So I didn't want to leave it all together. I didn't want to sell it and walk away from it. Um, I, I wanted to continue doing, doing this. Um, so that was, it, it was a very good fit. Um, it just made sense at the time. And I, I'm really happy that I did it. They've, they've been great to work with. You know, it's funny because we have a, a licensee, actually two guys that are partners up in the New York area. And mm -hmm. uh, when they first got into this business, they were looking to buy a medical mm -hmm. billing company. They just wanted to jump in there and have clients instantly and so forth. And, yep. and they bid on it and they lost. Somebody else bought it. So they just decided to look on the Internet and they found us and they said, hey, can you guys teach us how to run this kind of company? And yep. after researching this, they, they came down, went through the training. Now, Wendy, they have like three offices, 45 yep. employees, yep. Uh, over 300 uh, doctors they do billing for. Yeah, yep. it's big. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's huge. It's crazy how, how quickly right. it can grow um, and how quickly you can get providers um, if you do what it is that they're looking for. If you're, if you're good with their billing and their, their stuff like that, they're, I mean, they'll, they'll appreciate it. Well, and yeah, and, and like Lynn, Wendy said earlier, folks, we do help you position yourself as you know, you've just opened a local office of the nation's largest network of medical billing companies. We mm -hmm. are. <laughs> and yeah. so you can position yourself as being much larger than you are, unless yeah. you just specifically tell them, you know, I work out of my spare bedroom and <laughs> in my pajamas. Uh, you know, you don't have to go into those details. They don't care. They don't care. They don't care because they don't come to your office. They usually, you know, have yeah. you come to their office. So. Yeah, I hardly have anybody come to my office. My office, I... I we've had a provider in the office in the last I don't know, six months so yeah Claude says do you, do you now have any remote employees and if so how do you deal with the issue of keeping patient information secure mm -hmm. um so we have a, we do have remote employees um we have a server that everybody is you know logging into um nothing can leave the server the server is in like a a back room. Um, we actually have two servers, but one of our servers um, that they're accessing is in a back room with like a gated door and all kinds of security cameras and stuff on it. But um, it's, you know, that definitely is a, you know, there's no printers, there's no, you know, this and that. So no cell phones. Um, so it's, it's yeah. on, under lock and key for sure. Um, but well, and, and of course, now, Wendy's chosen to go the path of, of using a system that has, you know, a server that she has control over, which you're certainly welcome to do, but our cloud-based system now allows you to just log in securely from anywhere in the world because yep. it is HIPAA, HIPAA compliant, which means it follows all the rules for that uh, patient uh, privacy thing. Yeah, and, yeah. and this our, our server is more for just keeping our uh, patient documents and stuff like that, but the, um, uh, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, and there are reasons why you might want to do that. We have a system now, I think I put that on the screen earlier, uh, for iDocs Now, which is an online HIPAA compliant, you know, place that you can store all your files. In fact, Wendy, if you come to our office, if you ask to see the file cabinets, there are none. When the papers, yep. paperwork comes into us, whether electronically or otherwise, we scan that into iDocs Now and then shred yep. it and there is yep. no paper in our office. I, yep, I, I totally agree with that. You know, which would be a good thing if you were in, uh, you know, New Orleans, for example, and everything washed your whole business away. You, you could just yep. go somewhere and log yep. in and, and have access to it. Else. Yep, that's the beauty of this yep. business. <laughs> Here's a question from Brian about men and women. He says, <laughs> I see a lot of women in this business. Do you see it being more difficult for a male as they are seen maybe more of a sales guy? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, honestly, I, I, no, I, I completely understand because um, in my office, um, obviously there is a predominantly more women in my office. Um, we have um, one of the gentlemen that we actually just hired. He, I am happy to have a guy in the office because we do have some providers that just work better with men than they do with women. Um, and it's, uh, so I, I mean, regardless, I, I, I think if a provider is looking at you based on, you know, what gender you are, I think that's, that's a whole nother issue. Um, I'd be concerned about that provider anyway, but I mean, they should be looking at their bottom dollar. Like if you can get them paid on stuff, it shouldn't matter. <laughs> well, I remember when I 
first started marketing for my wife. This was in the late eighties. I mean, you know, black and white days yeah. didn't even have computers back then, but yeah. I would go in a little bit, uh, let's say too overdressed, you know, yeah. because I looked, I wanted to be, you know, like sharp and I had a time <laughs> coat and jacket. And I, yeah. And then I made the mistake of bringing a, a briefcase in. Oh, no. Well, that's that's like a red flag to the people behind the glass. They go, uh oh, like, oh here it comes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so yeah. we, we do kind of go into that in the training as to what's important as to for your, your appearance. Uh, you don't want to yeah. be, you know, in your uh, Bermuda shorts yeah. or anything, but you certainly <laughs> yeah. don't have to dress up like a sales guy. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Uh, again, Brian, Brian's got that that background, so he's kind of wondering how that works. Yeah. Um, so he is asking, how much can you expect with a single client, mm -hmm. one doctor? I kind of depends think that, on that. I mean, if they're full time, it depends on their specialty and and stuff like that. So, I mean, you can make decent money on like a family physician that's full time, meaning five days a week. You could you could do very well with that provider. Um, I mean, they would, I don't know, depends on how active they are and stuff like that, but they could be making anywhere between 40 and 50,000 a month, um, that the provider could be bringing in. Um, so I mean, you can, right. and, then, and then you charge a percentage of that. Uh, yeah. can you give us a feel for that? Yeah. Well, yeah, I know every client is different, but what, what range are you talking about? Usually that doctors are, are okay with as far as a percentage. Most of my clientele fall between 4% and 8%. Um, so I'm kind of all over the place and in between there. Um, some of them we yeah. have a couple that are flat rate, um, some that we do per claim. Um, so it's, and again, that's the beauty of ABS is that it's your business. You do whatever it is that you want to do. Um, just as yeah. long as you're making enough to cover your expenses at the end of the day and make a little bit of money. That's right. That's right. You know, we have a website out there that uh, I think it's at the bottom of all the screens that I show slides on uh, absystems.com. And folks, there's a calculator on there that you can punch in some numbers and get a feel for how much money you can make. In fact, our, our, our webinar next week is on that topic of how much can you expect to make as a medical revenue manager. Mm -hmm. uh, Ahmad says, has the remaining has the remaining workers I think this must be a continuation of a previous uh, question that I don't see there, Ahmad. You might re-tap re that one. Um, well, Sahid is asking the question, she says it's for ABS, but you can answer this. Is there a royalty monthly or yearly after the original mm -hmm. license fee is paid? Nope, nope. I haven't paid anything yeah. back to them. They've been, they've been <laughs> great. <laughs> I you haven't been sending in your monthly royalty <laughs> check, <you> know, Wendy. <laughs> Textbook. I have nothing written out to ABS, so it's um, it is a one-time no. fee. So you know, that's a good question. That unlike uh, yeah, unlike uh, franchises, which do charge you know a percentage yeah. right off the top of your gross income, uh, we don't yeah. do that. There's there's never another fee that you pay to ABS at all. That's pretty amazing. Uh, Jim Jim says, do you look at different pricing models based on the the, the office that you're billing for? You just said that you, yeah. you did come up with. Yeah, the I mean, to um, it depends um, on the volume. It, uh, it depends on you know the size of the practice. If I if they're a new practice, I mean, it, it kind of depends on it depends on a lot of things. Sometimes it's um, if you go in there, you know that person's going to nickel and dime you. Like I mean, you kind of get the feel when you're talking to them that they're going to be uh, that person's going to nickel and dime me, so I'm going to upcharge it and then we'll back it down afterwards. And if they don't, okay, great. Then I won all the way around. But um, That's right. a little bit of wiggle room it makes everybody feel happy. You, you can always go down on, right. on the price, but you, right. Right. But you, you can go up once you've no, it. You it. Go up. <laughs> Doesn't always work. One, I don't know about you, uh, but a lot of licensees on their first client, they'll go in really low, you know, because they want to get that account. And then they yep. regret that because that doctor, when he refers another doctor, he's going to tell them, you know, yes. how yeah, much he you know, if that happens, I usually tell, I try to tell my providers like, look, this is, this is your, your fee. And, you know, please don't share that with anybody else because this is, I've set this up special for you. I don't, I don't offer this to everybody else. And, um, you know, some of the times it's true. And some of the times it's, it's not, it's not a lie. I set it up special for them, but it's, I, I they, think I'm not sure with everybody they, else. They, yeah, well, if they if they do tell their friend though, that friend is going to want that same rate no matter what, you know. So yeah, sometimes, um, you can, sometimes you can't. Yeah, Daniel says, do you ever go to medical conferences or trade shows? 
Um, we have not, I have not, um, as of yet this year, we're looking at a couple that we're going to do. Um, uh, I think there's actually one in February that we're going to be doing here. So I'll let yeah. you know how to. <laughs> Let's see. Jim says, do you get contacted more from the business owner or the doctor or the office manager with inquiries? Uh, Are you taking away? Yeah. I would say on that, it's usually usually the doctor is contacting us. I've, I've had some business managers contact us in the past, um, but for the most part, it's usually the doctor. Um, they're usually the ones running the show and running the business. And um, yeah. very rarely do I see them put all their faith and trust in an office manager um, to do that. Sometimes I do. Uh, his other part of that question is, are you, are you taking away job security from the office manager or other office employees by doing the billing for the doctor? No, um, there are some situations where yes, they had a biller in the office. Um, sometimes that role will change. Um, sometimes that person wasn't doing that job at all. And we've had to clean up a massive mess. Um, and you know, employees that don't do the work that they're supposed to be doing shouldn't be in that position. Um, some of them will be moved to other positions. Um, you know, maybe that person is doing authorizations as well as the billing and rooming patients. They're probably doing a multitude of other things. Um, so by us coming in, we may take one piece of that. We may be more taking the billing off of their hands so that they don't have to worry about the billing and posting payments and stuff like that. So now they can focus on authorizations so that their claims will go in and get processed and paid. Um, so that the doctor can make more money. Um, so sometimes the roles change. Um, sometimes there's not a position for that, that person. And it's because that person worked themselves into that type of a situation. Um, yeah. Same as any other business out there. Right. Exactly. Uh, Claude says, we're, with the, was the company emerged with also an ABS licensee? No, they were not. No. They were not. Yeah. <laughs> I did ask them that. Originally, and they were not. Let's see. Claude says, when you hired employees, did they have a background in coding or billing? Uh, yes, yes. Um, I have I have gone the path. I've tried, you know, bringing in people that have, you know, not necessarily billing and coding experience. Um, I and when I say experience, maybe billing experience, not necessarily coders. I. I I think we've only got one certified coder on staff in my office. Um, in my the other office we have, we've got I think there's three um, that are on on staff there. Um, but for the most part, most of my people are they've had experience billing, but not um, not an actual certified coder. Um, and to me, I don't think that you really need that because you're getting the codes from the doctor's office. Um, right. They're providing you with that information. You're basically taking that information, putting it into the system, and then you're working your magic with insurance companies to get them paid. Yeah, and I think I showed this uh, earlier here. Let me see if I can put this slide back up here. Um, because, folks, our, our system, our electronic medical record system, actually has all of the codes built into it. Mm -hmm. That's right. All 70,000 plus uh, <laughs> ICP-9 and CPT codes, they're all, uh, they're all in there. Mm -hmm. and, and the doctor, when he is seeing the patient using our tablet, our iPad, uh, he will actually see the codes. We even have the old ICD-9 codes in there for doctors who are still, you know, using some of those I codes. Still have so. some too. <laughs> That's all but, they yeah. know. They transfer right. them right before after they put them in. So, yeah. yeah. That, that's a question Glenda had here too. Who does the coding for the charges? Well, the coding is either done by the system itself, built mm -hmm. into it. Uh, you don't have to worry about that nowadays. You could go and get a, a degree, I guess, in coding, but that would be yeah. if you wanted to go work for a doctor's office, wouldn't it? Exactly. Uh, if you wanted to do like the coding and stuff like that for them, then that would be probably a good route to go. Um, but I, I mean, people in my office are doing billing and it's follow up work and um, yeah, banging on insurance company doors and asking for asking for the payment. <laughs> Right. Uh, Sahita so says, how did you pay the first employee, hourly or a percentage? Um, my first employee was hourly. Um, they've, actually, all my employees have been hourly. Um, I've, yeah. I've had some outside work that um, has helped, but I, I think actually everybody's been hourly. 
just easier to manage. Yeah. Um, let's see. This is Claude says, this is to Patrick. He says, you, you said we can position ourselves as members of the largest network of medical billers. Do we use ABS's name in marketing material? You, you never I have, have you? Um, no, I didn't. I honestly just, I mean, I use my company name and I just said I was part of a, you know, nationwide network uh, at the time it was like 1500 people. <laughs> I'm sure it's more than that now. Um, and that usually sufficed. It didn't, they weren't asking for, you know, specific examples or anything like that. I have had some um, licensees that um, I have worked with them and actually got on the phone with them and the, the per potential provider that they were billing for or wanting to bill for um, and kind of helped answer any questions and stuff like that. So um, there, there's always that option as well. You mean as uh, as part of our coaching program, you've done some coaching yeah. with other licensees, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and like I said, actually getting on the phone with them and uh, them and their potential provider. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But no, normally, Claude, you don't use uh, our name. Uh, they wouldn't know who. Uh, you know, you don't want them yeah. googling American business systems because we are in the business of training and supporting you, and so yeah. we teach you to set up your own company name. That's right. Yeah. Go under your own company for sure. Yeah. Uh, Ahmad's still wondering where those other people are. If only seven workers are at your office, <laughs> well, you, you have another office now that uh, yeah. that you merged with. They, they're mostly yeah. there, I guess. Or are some of them still working out of their homes, too? Uh, no, no. Um, they're, so they're all out of our other office that we have. Um, so we've got my office and then the other office. So mm -hmm. yeah. that's the what majority. Uh, let's see, Ahmad says, what's the average paid hourly salary to our workers? Well, hey, some of our workers may be on this webinar. We might not want to talk about that. But in general, don't billers usually uh, get $10, $12, yeah. 15 I don't know what it is. Yeah, I mean, it, it obviously depends on your area and your region that you're in. Um, but I mean, anywhere from, depending on how experienced they are, I mean, anywhere from I don't know, $10 all the way up to, you know, $15, $20 an hour. Depends on, it depends on what you're having them do. Um, if you're having them do, you know, just payment posting or just data entry, obviously you're not going to pay them $20 an hour. Um, you know, any, right. literally anybody can do that. Um, it's, it's very easy work, just char data entry, charge entry. So it just depends sure. on the level of what you're actually having them do. I have account managers in my office that, you know, that could make upwards of $20 an hour. So um, it literally yeah. just depends on, on what they're doing. Right. Okay. We got about three minutes. I'm just going to ask, a, 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 I've just got too many questions coming in. They all come in at the very last minute, yeah. you know, so <laughs> I'm going to have to just uh, take these first couple and then we'll uh, wrap up. <laughs> Wendy, uh, John says in your experience, what is your average rejection rate that you come across in your billing now? In other words, when you're talking to a prospective doctor, what are you finding that their rejection rates are out there? Um, they're kind of all over the place. It just depends on how good, um, it, whatever, if, if you're putting junk into the system, you're gonna get junk out of the system. So I, I, a lot of it at the very beginning um, is going over you know, with the provider and looking at how is their information, how, how is the front desk staff getting that information? Are they getting good information? Are they verifying eligibility? Um, cause this day and age, I'm, I am pretty sure it's the same in every state out there, but Medicaid is, is insane. Medicare market is insane. People are jumping from policy and plan, um, weekly, monthly. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Um, so if yeah. the front end staff is not doing a good job checking eligibility, you're going to end up with a lot of rejections. Um, and we've walked into situations like that and trying to work with their office and training and coaching them into, hey, you can use the system because the system will work for you that it actually runs eligibility the day before, two days before, a week before. So you can get that appropriate insurance information up front and not get easy rejection denials on eligibility. Um, and, you know, and once you get that stuff kind of weeded out, the rest of the stuff is, I mean, you're gonna run into some rejections here and there, but for the most part, I mean, diagnosis codes, the system won't even let you send stuff out if all the appropriate information is not in place. Right. Well, and that that's why our nationwide uh, rejection rate in our system is uh, less than 2%. Now, that's because of all the different things we have in place, including the fact that ours has a built-in clearinghouse. It's mm -hmm. not going to a third party and so forth. So uh, 
Okay, yeah. Wendy, I don't know how to thank you uh, for, for being on here. Uh, I am going to send you a little gift since it's your uh, 10th anniversary this month. <laughs> 10 so, years. Uh, be, uh, thank you. You didn't huh? have to do that. It's gotten kind of dark in here. Sorry, I feel like I'm sitting in a dark room now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, as the sun goes down. Yeah, 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 it's super dark at you know, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> so. Well, thanks again. I appreciate so much your time, Wendy. And I know people are inspired by your story that you show where people can take this business if they want to. So, Well, yeah, I, I hope so. I, I wish you all the best of luck in making your decision. and. Um, ABS has is, is been a fantastic company to work with, and um, I, I would if I had it all to do again, I would do it again, and I would do it with ABS because it's it's been it's been great, it's been absolutely great. Thank you so Congratulations much, Wendy. On 25 years to you guys too. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right, uh, tell Bob I said hi. I will. Thank you. Okay. Bye for now. <laughs>